Hey, what's up guys? It's Tips, and welcome to my Classic WoW Rage Fire Chasm Guide. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the most out of your journey into RFC, World of Warcraft's first dungeon. As with all my dungeon guides, we'll be covering quests and quest chains, boss fights and loot, and notable trash packs. But first, let's start off with a quick dungeon overview. Ragefire Chasm is a level 13 to 18 dungeon located in the Horde capital city of Orgrimmar. The entrance to the dungeon is situated deep within the Cleft of Shadow. RFC contains four different bosses and introduces new players to basic dungeon mechanics such as crowd control, mob positioning, and group composition. Due to its low level requirement, linear progression path, and rudimentary encounters, RFC is widely considered to be the easiest dungeon in the game. There are five Horde-exclusive quests associated with RFC. In this section, I'll explain where each quest is picked up, how it's completed, and, if applicable, any and all prerequisites. Let's start off with RFC's most popular quest, Hidden Enemies. Hidden Enemies is a five-part quest chain that begins and ends with Thrall in Orgrimmar. The first part of the chain can be picked up at level 9 and requires you to loot a lieutenant's insignia from the Burning Blade agents inside the cave just east of Orgrimmar. From there, you'll be asked to speak to Nero Fireblade in the Cleft of Shadow, who'll have a dialogue option available for you to exhaust. Once you've exhausted the dialogue, return to Thrall to turn in the quest. He'll give you the next step in the chain, which requires you to enter Ragefire Chasm and slay the last two bosses of the dungeon, Bazalon and Jurgosh the Invoker. Bazalon is located deep within RFC and can be found by scaling the ramp adjacent to the large X room. Jurgosh the Invoker is in the final room of the dungeon, just after the X as well. This quest will be tagged as complete when you've killed both bosses. The second dungeon quest, Slaying the Beast, can be picked up from Nero Fireblade in the Cleft of Shadow. The quest requires you to loot Terragaman the Hungerer's Heart from Terragaman the Hungerer in RFC. Terragaman is located in the center of RFC's iconic X room, and the quest will be tagged as complete once you've killed him and looted his heart. Searching for the Lost Satchel is a two-part quest chain that's picked up from Raharo in Thunderbluff. He's located on the Elder Rise just after the bridge. The quest requires you to find another Tauren named Mar Grimtotem, who's disappeared inside the chasm. Mar's body can be found in a small cave located just right of the large trog room in RFC. He's guarded by a mini-boss named Ogleflint and two other elite trogs. Once you've taken care of Ogleflint, speak to Mar to pick up the next part of the quest chain, returning the lost satchel. As its name suggests, this quest has you return the satchel to Raharo and Thunderbluff for your final reward. The next quest, Testing an Enemy's Strength, is also picked up from Raharo and Thunderbluff. It requires you to kill 8 Ragefire Trogs and 8 Ragefire Shaman, both of which can be found in the first major room of RFC, as well as in the surrounding corridors. The quest will be tagged as complete once you've killed all 16 Trogs. RFC's final quest, The Power to Destroy, is picked up from Vera Mathras in the Undercity. This quest requires you to loot two spellbooks from Searing Blade mobs in RFC. Both spellbooks can drop off of Searing Blade cultists and Searing Blade warlocks, which are found in the second half of the dungeon. The quest will be tagged as complete once both spellbooks, the Spells of Shadow, and the Incantations from the Nether have been looted. Next up, we have Ragefire Chasm's Dungeon Bosses. In this section, I'll be explaining each boss's location, abilities, and loot drops. Ogleflint is a level 16 elite trog located in a small cave just right of the major trog room. He has one major ability and is flanked by two elite trogs. Make sure you face Ogleflint away from the melee and make sure to CC at least one trog before engaging him. This can be done by having a mage polymorph one of the adds or by having a warlock use their fear ability which is safe to use in this small confined room. Once one of the adds has been killed, you can transition back to Ogleflint and kill him. The second boss in Ragefire Chasm is Terragaman the Hungerer. Terragaman is a level 16 elite demon located at the center of the iconic X room. He has two major abilities, Fire Nova and Uppercut. Fire Nova is a massive AoE spell that inflicts more damage the closer you are to Terragaman. Have your ranged DPS stand at max range to avoid the damage, and make sure your melee runs away from the boss when the Nova is being cast. Terragaman's second ability is called Uppercut. Uppercut is a standard knockback that throws your tank up in the air periodically. To deal with this ability, have your tank pull Terragaman away from the edges of the platform so that no one is knocked into the lava. 
The rest of the fight is a basic tank and spank and shouldn't be too difficult. The third boss in RFC is Jurgosh the Invoker. Jurgosh is a level 16 orc warlock located in the final room of the dungeon. He has two major abilities, Curse of Weakness and Immolate, both of which are for the most part negligible. However, like Ogleflint, Jurgosh is also flanked by two mobs. Make sure to CC at least one of the mobs while the other is focused down before transitioning back to Jurgosh. If you're planning on using fear for crowd control on this encounter, make sure to clear the entire room prior to pulling the boss. Ad control is the key to this fight, so just make sure you're focused on keeping those adds in binds. The final boss of RFC is a satyr named Basilon. He's a level 16 elite located at the end of the ramp just before Jurgosh. Like the previous bosses in this dungeon, Basilon is flanked by two mobs, however, the mob on his left can be pulled without engaging the boss, greatly reducing the difficulty of the encounter. The other mob should be CC'd while your group focuses damage on the boss, because his two abilities, Sinister Strike and Deadly Poison, will deal a significant amount of damage to your tank, so make sure to burn him down real quick. Aside from boss fights, RFC contains a wide assortment of trash mobs that test groups in different ways. In this section, I'll identify the most notable trash mobs in RFC, why they're dangerous, and how to deal with them in a simple yet effective manner. The first notable trash you'll encounter in RFC are the Ragefire Shaman. Because these Shaman are caster mobs and located in a densely packed room, they can easily chain pull multiple packs if not dealt with. The best way to handle these shaman is to range pull them back or to line of sight them while casting to draw them into melee range. Once they're in melee range, they pose no significant threats. The other notable trash mobs in RFC are the Searing Blade Agents scattered across Terragaman's X Room. This is where most new players may experience a wipe, not because of any one particular mob, but because of the sheer quantity of burning blade mobs in the area. Each pull here will have at least three elites, with the occasional fourth being the Warlock's Voidwalkers. On top of that, elite agents patrol throughout the area, so if you're not careful, a five mob pull is entirely possible. The big thing here is to just wait out the patrols, take down the Voidwalkers first, as they're the squishiest, and CC whenever you can. Don't let yourself tunnel vision in this room, and you'll be fine. But that concludes my classic WoW Ragefire Chasm guide. If you're looking for more guides to aid you on your classic journey, sub it up and stick around, because we got more coming. For more information on RFC, you can check out my full written guide over on classic.wowhead.com, which I've linked in the description below. Finally, a quick shout out to all of my patrons who make videos like this possible. If you'd like to become a patron and support the channel as well, you can do so on patreon.com slash tipsoutbaby. But aside from that, have a wonderful day fellas, I'll see you guys on Twitch, and as always, tips out baby.